Welcome to my Smackdown Live review, ladies and gentlemen. This was a good Smackdown Live. But there were things in here that pissed me off beyond no freaking reason. And there was only one thing that did that. And that's the opening of the show with the freaking titles. Blue. I saw Andre Corbell's um, rant about what was coming. And I've seen several videos about the red title. And then I heard about the blue titles. And I thought they wouldn't go that far. And they did. Now, I didn't say anything on my Raw review or my, my SummerSlam review because I wanted to focus on what was important, not the colors of the title. No, I mean the color, not the colors. The color of the title of the, Universal, of the Universal Championship. But what was going on, that they were pushing new talent, that people you normally wouldn't see in the main title scene were now giving a chance, that we would see more. What happened with Finn Balor getting hurt? And if you saw my little slice of Raw, you know how I feel. And my little slice of Raw... Finn Bella got hurt because they've overworked them, and those turnbuckle bomb type of maneuvers need to be stopped. People are getting hurt too much in WWE. That's just my point of view. You can check out my little slice of Raw. I may leave it in the comment below. My, not comment. Description below. But you know how I feel. But when I looked at the titles, I was angry. Look, there is a website. Basic plug. I've been considering buying a title from them, a belt. It is called, what is it, ProAMBelt.com. I'm going to leave a connection. No, I'm not going to leave a connection. I'm actually going to just show a picture of the website. And maybe here. And you can see the titles. Some of them go between 100 something, some of them go up to 300. The WWE could have gone to one of those people if they didn't want to bother making a new freaking title and design. They could have had someone else do it. Do it for 300 freaking dollars. Do it for that and then use it. Even if they say, well, it looks like crap, you know what? They could say, well, we got an outside company to do it. Now, of course, they'll get flack for not doing it, but if they didn't want to design a new freaking title, or better yet, bring back an old title. Look. The old Intercontinental title or the old heavyweight title that had the eagle on it. Why couldn't you bring that one back? Just update it a little bit with an, a, a better design. You could have used one of the older titles. Hell, the Stone, the Stone Cold Skull title could have been better in this situation. But this is what we got. Now, we had two, six, well, I mean, two matches for the tag title tournament. And supposedly we we're going to have two matches for the six-pack challenge for the women, but we only got one match. And I'm going to talk about both tag titles, and then I'm going to talk about all six women as quickly as possible. Both tag titles. Well, I'm not talking both tag titles. You see, the tag titles on my mind is pissing me off. When it came to the Usos and the Ascension, when it came to American Alpha and Brizango. I'm going to put both of them here if I can, or both below. I don't know where. But essentially speaking, when you look at both matches, they're both very good. But which one was better? I believe that the American Alpha match was better with Brizango only because when it came to the Usos dealing with the Ascension, the, let's be honest, Connor and Victor aren't doing that well. I just felt like they weren't working good enough. And when it came to Brizango, when it came to Tyler and to Fandango, they actually gave more energy. I don't know what it is about the Ascension right now. They just don't feel like they're really clicking much. They did work. They did some good work. But I felt Brizango was better than them. And you would expect Connor and Victor now to be going, all right, this is our chance. We're going to show them how really good we are from NXT. And I didn't get that. I felt more from Brizango and one of them from NXT than both of them from NXT in a Ascension. That's just how I feel. Now, when it comes to all six women, when it came to Becky and Alondra Bliss, okay, match, the Zarma won the match for Becky Lynch. When it came to look like the second match was going to be Carmella versus Nikki Bella, you got Nikki Bella about to have a little talk with a Renee Young and then got her ass kicked by a Carmella, which I am so happy about. Yes! This is what I said before. As they both stand, I'm talking about Carmella and Alondra Bliss, they're very generic. They either need someone to play off of or they need to change their character. In this case, the character change for a Carmella was to turn heel. For Alondra Bliss, the best option if they don't turn her heel, because it looks like Nikki Bella is going to be turned face now. 
because she got a butt kicked and she looks so defenseless, so innocent. So Alondra Bliss is going to probably stay heel, but she needs a partner. As I said before, between these two women, they're both generic and need people to play off of. Without someone to play off of, they just seem generic and a bit boring. But Carmella now has turned heel, so that attitude will actually make sense. And when it comes to Alondra Bliss, if she doesn't team up with Carmella, she could team up with the hopefully returning Ema Marie, who now broke the wellness program. Are you serious? She supposedly broke the wellness program. Oh. Anyway, going to the last two women who I felt was very important to me personally. Because I'm going to be honest here. Who do I feel might make it to Backlash, the one of the two? It's going to be Nikki Bella. Nikki is going to make it to Backlash for one simple reason, one simple reason only. She just came back and she's getting a huge pop from the audience. People want to cheer her. That's the reason why they turned the face so quickly against Carmella. The second person that might make it because of how things have been looking for her might be Naomi. It's also a good chance it could be Natalia, but I don't want Natalia. I want Naomi. Naomi got new music. She got a chance to show how well she could dance. In this case, when she was at ringside when, with Natalia, she got a chance to talk. Now, of course, the problem with Naomi is that she never really got a lot of opportunity to really express herself and talk a lot. On top of that, Naomi is a very soft-spoken person. We all know that she's very gentle and soft-spoken. Doesn't mean when you get her pissed, she won't start cursing her ass off. But in this case, she's very soft-spoken. And I kind of hope that she'll hype it up a little bit more. Not to be squealish, but the, the attitude needs to be amped a little bit more. But if they are finally pushing Naomi, because think about it. If Sasha Banks is now out because of injury which he is, and supposedly, I believe it was on the Lex Men's Twitter account, he found out that she doesn't need surgery, she'll be back in a month, which is great. Maybe they might think, well, the people want a black champion. Maybe since... Uh, I don't think it'll happen. I want it to happen with Naomi. Maybe it might. Having that picture of her right near that title look good. So that's just how I feel about it. Heath Slater having his chance to try and make it in the WWE, trying to make it in SmackDown, being told by the brass in the back. One, you want to try and get a title? Fine. But if you get that title, it does not mean, well, not get the title, I'm sorry. Essentially speaking, they said he wants a job. He's going to have to go through the tag title tournament. If he wins it, he gets a contract. Go in the back and find a partner, which he did. And our Rhino. I'm not too surprised because they're not going to be doing a lot with Rhino. Rhino is supposedly trying to put people over. Especially now that he's supposedly a politician. If I'm right, he's a politician right now. So I don't know how much time he's going to be able to have wrestling if he truly is one. So this might be his last run as a wrestler for a little while. If he actually goes into full politics. He may finish after the end of the year. Who knows? But at least Heath Slater now has an angle and people are cheering for him. This is what I said. Give Heath Slater an angle that could work. And I do believe he can pull it off. That's just me. Um, the Shane McMahon interview. I don't know what to feel about that. Because I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe there might be a match between Shane and Brock Lesnar at... Hmm... The next pay-per-view will be, what is that? Um, Survivor, Survivor's, no. The last pay-per-view of the year will be Survivor Series. My mistake, I'm sorry. So, there's a possibility either at Survivor Series or before that, maybe if they do a Hell in a Cell match, he might go for that. You never know with Brock. You never know with Shane McMahon. He did well with The Undertaker. Now he may do well with Brock Lesnar. Who knows? Um, let's see, am I forgetting anything? Ah, the Randy Orton segment. <whistles> Ten staples in the head. <whistles> Getting that shit popped in his skull. He made it look good. 
He spoke well. But here's the problem. Bray Wyatt comes out. The eater of no worlds. I, I'm sorry. I still do care about Bray Wyatt, but at this moment in time, I'm not going to care about him. I'm being truthful. When was the last time Bray Wyatt was pushed properly? Two years ago. When has he won a title? Never has he won a title. He has barely been pushed properly. Do you actually believe Randy Orton is going to really gain something from Bray Wyatt? Or better yet, Bray Wyatt gained something from Randy Orton. He just got his ass kicked by Brock Lesnar. Does not mean he's going to job to a Bray Wyatt. Who is it? This is Brock. This is Randy. This is a Bray Wyatt. There is no way Bray Wyatt is going to get over in this situation. As I said before and I say it again. Put him in the main tag title scene with Eric Rowan. Let him win a title. Let him run with a title. Let him win gold. And then break him off again to be a tag from a tag specialist to a singles competitor, then people will care about it. I mean, people love his promo segments. There's no problem with that. He's an incredible talker. But when the hell does he win in the ring? And when the hell does he ever win in the ring and then not job the next week after that? You guys tell me below if I'm wrong or not. Because even if he wins against Randy Orton, he's going to lose against somebody else. I just don't see it. I hope I'm wrong, but I just don't see it. Um, let's see. Am I forgetting anything? No. I am now going to the final match of the night, which is AJ versus Dolph Ziggler. Opening of the show, I actually did like. It made some sense. AJ cocky about winning against John Cena. Looks at Dolph and says, you're nothing but a loser. Dolph really pissed off because he couldn't get it done. Beats up on AJ. Then again beats up on AJ. Then finally, the boss has said, okay, you guys want to get this aggression out? Let's do it this way. You two have a match. AJ, you win. You have a one-on-one -on -one with Dean Ambrose. Dolph, you win. You make it a triple threat. I didn't expect Dolph to win here because I feel like when it really comes down to it, and it was a great match. It is the match of the night. Dolph always does great work. Let's, let's be honest here. I keep saying I'm going to keep saying it. He's a main event jobber. He can be in the main event. He could hold a title as a transitional champion. He can hold it and do a storyline because he can do it. But he's not meant to be a long-term main eventer. He's just meant to float between the upper card and the main event. That's Dolph in a nutshell. That's what he is. But after seeing this match and then seeing the... the Face down between Dean and AJ Styles, which I'm interested in seeing. This is what I got to say about Dolph. It's time to go. Unless by the end of the year they give him a title, and I'm not talking about the IC title. I'm talking about the World Heavyweight Championship. If he does not get it, Nick needs to leave the WWE and go join Aaron Rex, Luke Gallows. No, no not Luke Gallows. Drew Gallows, sorry, EC3, Matt and Jeff Hardy, and Bobby Lashley. I'm being honest here. As great the money is, as great he gets to fly everywhere, Dolph is getting nowhere. Nick, originally I can't remember his last name, but Nick needs to leave the WWE. It's time. He's been there long enough that he has great recognition. He's always been a great performer, but where has he gotten himself? Nowhere. Unless they're going to give him gold at the end of this year, he needs to leave. I said this almost two years ago, and I believe almost a year and a half to two years ago, on a video, should Dolph Ziggler leave the WWE? And at that time I said yes, and now after this, this was the best opportunity for him while he was so hot. And he lost. And then he lost again. It is time for him to go. But this was a good show. And I hope you enjoyed the Zane View. Please give me a comment below. Watch out for my TNA review. I should get it done by Friday. Hopefully Friday. But if it's not, it's going to have to be Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. Because I do have to go to the doctor. Have a good day and have a good night. Hey.